Okay, so I wanted to do another video about uh, finding, resolving problems with bearings. And um, I thought I'd try a different method uh, because some people um, have issues uh, with the other method that I was explaining. Now, this one is, um, this method is pretty much the same, uh, doing the same thing, but it's a little more graphical, which might help some people to really understand the problem. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with a, a typical problem where a person is walking from A to B and then from B to C. And a typical um, question that would be asked would be to find um, this distance and bearing. So let's say someone wants to go from A to C uh, directly to meet them. Okay, and I'll draw this resultant in uh, green here. Okay, so person's traveling from A to B and then B to C and then someone else, like say their friend for instance, wants to go from A to C to meet them. All right? Um, okay, so let's take a look at how this, uh, how you might resolve this. Okay, in my previous example, uh, and if you haven't watched that, you probably should go and maybe take a look at it. Okay, but in my previous example, I talked about breaking these down into horizontal and vertical components and then adding and subtracting them. Um, that's actually a pretty useful way to do it, especially if you're in physics. Um, but especially some um, like uh, beginning math users, or not users, but beginning mathematicians might have a problem uh, visualizing that. So one thing you can do is, for instance, is just to draw a box around this. Okay, and then, okay. so we have like a box here, and what we're going to do is make a box that encompasses all of these points. Okay, so just like that. Okay. All right, now, if we have a box like this, what we can see is that we have a few right angles here. So there's a right angle there, there's a right angle there, and there's a right angle here. Okay, and it has to be because we've made a giant rectangle. All right. Now, what we can see is that, well, what you should be able to see is that we actually have three different triangles here. Okay, and so we have, a, I'll make a green resultant triangle here. Uh, and we have, we'll say, a light blue triangle here. And I'll make a, um, an orange triangle over here. Okay, so we have these different triangles here. And what we can, what we're trying to do is find the, the length and angles for this final triangle, uh, this green triangle. Okay, now because this is a rectangle, what we can do is we can take advantage of some of the properties of this. So for instance, the length of this side, okay, so the length of this side is the same as the length of the other side. Okay, so should it'll be the same as the length of this side because it's a rectangle. Okay, and if we can find the length of this side, we can subtract the two. So the length, or the we'll call it the height, the height of the yellow triangle um, minus the height of the blue triangle has to equal the height of the green triangle. Okay, similarly, the length of the blue triangle plus the length of the yellow triangle has to equal the length of the green triangle. And then once we have the height of the green triangle and the length of the green triangle, we can figure everything else about it out. Okay, so let's take a look and uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so um, let's just start off with finding out this length here and this length here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this, um, I'll call this alpha. Okay, and I'll call this beta. Okay, so what I'll have is I have cosine of 45 is equal to, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's alpha over 600. Okay, so 600 meters times cosine of 45 is equal to, 45 degrees is equal to alpha. Okay, and that means that alpha is equal to, and let's pull up our handy dandy calculator here, so 600 times cos 45, oops, let's try that a different way, cos 45 times 600. Okay, and so what that means is that this side is 424, I'm not, I'm just going to approximate here, okay, so 424 meters. Okay, 
Now for beta, what I can find is a sine of 45. Okay, so sine of 45 degrees is equal to opposites of beta divided by 600 meters. Okay, and so what I can have is 600 meters is uh, times sine 45 degrees is equal to length beta. Okay, and we'll so we'll take 45 sine times 600, and no surprise, it's 424 again. Okay, and I say no surprise uh, because sine and cos of 45 are the same thing. Okay, so moving on to the yellow triangle then, uh, what I'm going to do is try and find the lengths of these two sides. So what I'll do is I'll call this side gamma, and this sun I will call delta. Okay, uh, in case you're wondering, what I'm doing is I'm just using Greek letters, okay? Um, instead of using like X's and Y's and Z's, um, I'm just using the Greek letters because I, I think it makes it less confusing. Um, but if you don't like those, then you can just use X, Y, and Z, and that's cool too. Um, okay. So, let's see, I have uh, cosine, now if this is 160 degrees, okay, the whole thing from the north is 160, then the, this means that this has to be 70 degrees, okay? And so, um, the reason why is because this is 90 degrees on top, so to go from 90 to uh, 160 would be 70 degrees, okay. So th what this means then is uh, my, I can say that the cosine of 70 degrees is equal to the adjacent, so this is gamma, all over 1,000 meters, and that means 1,000 meters times cosine of 70 degrees is equal to gamma, and gamma making it look more and more like an 8. Gamma is equal to so 70 cosine times 1000 okay, is 342. Okay, so 342 meters. Okay, similarly I can find sine, so I can say sine um, of 70 degrees is equal to delta all over 1000, okay, because it's the opposite over hypotenuse, okay, so I can say that delta is equal to 1000 meters times sine of 70 degrees, and that my delta value is equal to 70 sine times 1000. Okay, so 939, well, I'll say 940. Okay, so what this means then is um, I can figure out these other side lengths, and I'm going to get rid of the calculations just to make things a little bit cleaner. Okay, so this was 342 meters now. Now, if you're doing this in a test, or for a project or something like that, I would strongly advise you not to um, not to just get rid of the calculations. Okay, should leave them in, um, mainly because whoever's marking your work is going to need to see your work in order to give you marks. And if you make a mistake, there's a good chance they can give you part marks unless you erase your work like I'm doing, and in which case they can't actually see what you're doing, and then they have no choice but to give you bad marks. Okay, so, in fact, okay. all right, so now that we've got this a little bit cleaned up, we can figure out the rest. Okay, so this side here, which I will call, uh, well, just uh, figure it out here, this whole length is 940 meters, this is 424. Okay, so this must be 940 meters minus 424 meters, okay, which is equal to, okay, so we have 940 minus 424, 
it's 516, so 516 meters. Okay, so this length here. Now clearly this, is, this drawing is not to scale, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then this side here has to be the sum of this side plus this side. So 424 plus uh, 342 is 766. Okay, and so now we figured out all the basic geometry of this, uh, of this, of this final green triangle. Okay, now what this means then is that we can just take out this green triangle. Okay, so um, what we can do is we can look at this and we, we can ignore the rest uh, of everything pretty much for now. Alright, let's take a look at just this angle here then. Okay, because remember in the question we were asked that we were saying that someone wanted to walk back from A to C. To, like, so it was a friend going from A to B and then B to C, and then their friend wanted to go from A to C to meet them. And so what we have to do is actually find out the entire bearing. Okay, what we really want is this one over here. Okay, so there we go. So this one, which we'll call um, theta. Okay, and I'll call this little one E for epsilon. Okay, now what this means is that I can I need to find out this epsilon value first, this little angle here, and I know that from north to south is 180 degrees. So if I subtract uh, the epsilon value from 180, I can find out the theta value. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this out. Now I need epsilon, and I have its opposite and its and its adjacent, so that means I can find tangent. So this would be tangent of epsilon is equal to opposite, so 766 meters, all divided by 516 meters. Okay, And what I'll find is that tangent of epsilon is equal to, let's go to the calculator, so 766 divided by 516, and that's 1.484. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to go in my calculator that's not on the computer and figure this out. Okay, so when I say second function tan of, of 1.484, I get that tan, that epsilon, is equal to almost exactly 56 degrees. Okay, so now if this is 56 degrees, that means that this was 180, like from north to south, so theta then is equal to 180 degrees minus 56 degrees. Okay, and that means that theta is 124 degrees. Okay, now the distance that they'd have to walk can be found using just the Pythagorean theorem. So what I'd have is, I will call this um, just AC with a bar. Okay, so the distance from A to C is equal to the, using the Pythagorean theorem, which I'm not going to do in great detail, uh, well I guess I can say AC squared is equal to five hundred and sixteen squared plus seven hundred and sixty six meters squared. Okay, and let's go to the calculator again. Okay, so five hundred and sixteen squared plus 766 squared, okay, is equal to that, and I want to find the square root of everything. So the square root of that is, oops, squared equals square root, okay, and so that's 900 and, say, 923.6. Okay, so AC then 
is equal to 923.6 meters. Okay, so finally the person, if they wanted to walk directly from A to C, would have to travel 923.6 meters on a bearing of 124 degrees. Okay, and so um, it's basically the same type of thing where we're breaking the triangles down into their horizontal and vertical parts, and then we're either adding and subtracting them based on the direction. But a lot of people will like this method better because it's more visual, and you can really see what's going on here. So I think that... Um, yeah, a lot of people, uh, especially if you're more of a concrete person, would like this method better. Um, anyways, once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully it was a helpful one. If you have any questions, uh, please send me an email or put a comment in the comment box. Um, if you do like the video, please thumb, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, then please subscribe. 